Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's <clears throat> Mental Canvas webinar. I'm Julie Dorsey, the founder of Mental Canvas. Today, we're going to focus on the use and potential of Mental Canvas's drawing software and creating comics and concept art. We're very fortunate to have two extremely creative and accomplished artists with us who will be sharing some of their work and experiences in using Mental Canvas. Let me start by introducing them and then we'll jump right into things. Um, so first we have uh, Rena Piccolo. Uh, Rena's cartoons have appeared in the New Yorker, Barron's Business Magazine, the Reader's Digest, Parade Magazine, and beyond. And her syndicated uh, daily comic strip, Tina's Groove, ran from uh, 2002 to 2017. And currently, Rena's cartoons can be seen Monday through Saturday in the comic feature Rhymes with Orange, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, in collaboration with Hillary Price and syndicated worldwide with um, Biking Feature Syndicate. Rena is also the co-author of the book Quirky Quarks, a cartoon guide to the fascinating realm of physics, uh, which she published in 2016. Currently, Rena is working with King Features and Mental Canvas. Um, to create comics and cartoons for the 21st century. And we've really um, enjoyed our collaboration with Rena and look forward to doing more work in the future. Our second panelist is Sam Masur. Um, Sam is an art director and designer working in the animation and entertainment industries. He's worked on films and TV shows for studios like Netflix, Disney TV, mm -hmm. DreamWorks TV and beyond. And he's currently working on a new on new game designs at Rovio in Finland. So um, what I thought we would do is start out by looking at a mental canvas scene um, and I'll give a brief introduction to the software in just a couple of minutes and then I'm going to hand it off to our panelists. So I um, want to begin by uh, showing you, um, I'm just waiting for this, uh, there we go. Um, I wanted to show you an example of what it's like to author in Mental Canvas. I like to think of Mental Canvas as picking up where drawing on paper leaves off and it, uh, Mental Canvas elevates drawing by augmenting it with what I call spatial strokes, 3D navigation and freeform animations all drawn with the um, ease of pencil and paper. So here we're seeing a scene developed um, we're drawing on an, a single canvas. This is um, a scene developed by the architect Carol Shung. Um, here we pick a feature in that original drawing and now we're going to spring a bridge off. Um, basic, basically uh, mental canvas scenes are comprised of uh, transparent canvases of infinite dimension that are um, placed in space. And you can see we're adding now a second drawing um, and now we're going to, so along the left, you can see individual canvases. So canvases can also have a layer stack inside, but the canvases themselves are spatially uh, positioned. So here we're adding a third canvas now out in the foreground with another person. And another mountain to meet the bridge. Now along the um, bottom of the screen, we have what we call our bookmarks or key views. Um, these can be used to create quick animatics. Um, and you can also, we have two modes in the system, drawing and viewing. We're now in view mode, looking around. <laughs> And we now have one bookmark or key view saved. Now we're um, adding some water to the scene. And one of the things about the software is you can kind of draw where you want to and then think about reprojecting or moving your strokes later. So those strokes are actually in the wrong place. They're water. The water is really meant to connect between uh, the two mountains. So what's happening here is that you can see in the view from which Carol drew those strokes, they look the same but now the strokes have been reprojected and they connect out to the mountain in the foreground. Um, now we can continue drawing um, and adding. We can also draw in situ. So there's a canvas we've just positioned right in front of us and we can now pick up the pen and draw right there.
We can also paint with um, opacity paint uh, to remove lines that uh, the artist might like to be hidden. And there we go, we have a very basic scene. Now we can go to any view and keep drawing or we can create a little um, fly through. Now you can select views by simply traveling to the view you'd like and using the camera below to select that, to save that view. And then you can play it back. You can remove views, add them, and you can also adjust the timing between views. And the output of the system is a video at various uh, resolutions or a, um, a mental canvas scene, which can be shared in a web browser. Okay, why don't we um, move, move ahead? Um, I wanna, before we get started with Rena, I wanted to show you that um, some of you may ask, uh, is it possible to start with some artwork um, rather than drawing from scratch? And that, yes, it is. And I just wanted to show you an example um, of Bernice. Um, uh, this is a, um, started as a single panel. And some of those operations I just showed you um, with drawing that is being able to project or move strokes around were done uh, all with this single panel, creating a series of mental canvas canvases, and then the ability now to navigate in that scene. So you could always start with something like this and then add to it, add additional things that might have been occluded or um, invisible initially and, you know, like Easter eggs and things like that. Uh, but I just want to show this just to give you an idea and um, thanks to King Features for the permission to show this. Okay. Um, terrific. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so now I'd like to go uh, to Rena Piccolo. Um, and Rena recently published um, in collaboration with uh, King Feature Syndicate and Mental Canvas, what we think of as a kind of comic of the future, um, an elaborate rhymes with orange scene. And I'm, I don't want to steal the take your thunder away, but um, that use that's immersive and really quite wonderful and actually perfectly timely for a pandemic when we're all stuck at home and not able to go to real museums. So Rena, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Julie. And I just wanted to say thanks to everyone uh, who could join us today. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun. You learn something about mental canvas. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go to my screen by the way, Julie, I don't know if I have any thunder today, so we'll have to see. <laughs> um, okay, so this was, this is the, we called it the gallery scene, and it was the, the pilot um, single panel cartoon, uh, my first cartoon that I did on with Mental Canvas. Um, I mean, I've, you know, before, before this, I did a lot of experimental scenes. Um, just to get a good hang of the app and the software. And, but this was, this was one that was actually done incomplete. So um, do you want to just go through it? I, I guess we could go through it. Yeah, I'd, I'd and, play it once through. Um, oh, yeah. And then you can maybe show okay. people things they missed the first time. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just play it through. Get rid of this. Here we go.
um, like Julie was just explaining, Mental Canvas works with different canvases for different uh, dimensions, I guess you'd say, because it's spatial drawing. So if you're drawing in one canvas, you could hinge it or project it so that it's on a different plane. Um, let's see, what else could I say about it? Shall I do, a, should I draw something new in the gallery, Julie, do you think, or? Sure, that would be great. Okay, so basically you have your canvases here on the side. And like I said, I created one just so that I could add something new. And so I'm just going to sketch, put it in draw mode. So this canvas, you can't really see anything now, but it's like in between this wall and this guy right here. So I'm just gonna select um, pencil tool. Okay. Are we allowed to make mistakes? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever done live drawing before, so bear with me. So already you could see, I'm just going to show you real quick how it's on a different canvas. And the reason why it's transparent is when you're drawing and you're not using any color, um, it back in draw mode. If you're not using color, which comes in after, uh, things are transparent. So color gives it opacity. Okay. Like I said, I never draw in front of an audience. So this is like really challenging for me. quick sketch here and if you want to make it opaque you just go down to oh oops don't want to do that <clears throat> and you could add color or even just white will make it opaque I'll show you So if you add a color or just white, it makes the, um, the sketch opaque. So there's, and then um, if you want to add a word balloon, you could, let's see, let's make the word balloon go a little bit, I'm going to project now so that I open up a new canvas. Sorry, I'm going to open up a new canvas in front of the dog. Like that, not too far because it's a word balloon. I want it to be somewhere close. So I've just created a new canvas that's slightly in front of the dog and Hmm. Okay. Oops, a little too thick. Okay.
by the way, when you're working like this, you could make the other canvases disappear, but for some reason, that's not showing up on my, oh, there we go. Okay. And again, when we open it up again, th that's transparent until we add a little bit of color on that. There. So just a quick little demo on how. Now, here's the thing. Whoa, no crash detection on this. I went right through a wall. Um, well, that's not colored in. Hold on just a moment. Okay. So right now, it's probably not pointing right to him. So we're just gonna hinge it a little bit. That's the hinge tool here. So you could make it go on an angle like this. And if you could see up here, you could see what I'm doing, moving it, hinging it. And that's the hinge projection tool. So there you've got slightly colored in, not, co not completely. And right now he's kind of floating off the floor, but you can fix, fix that by going back to that canvas. Am I taking too much time, Julie? Uh, not at all. Um, okay. One of the things while you're doing that, I could say uh -huh. is that um, Rena showed that she could turn off uh, basically all of her canvases, you can do that selectively, um, you know, turn, make things visible or invisible as you like, uh, depending on what you're working on at the moment. Right, because it's, it's too distracting to have things in the background when you're just in draw mode. And go back up to that. And we're going to move this one as well. The thought balloon. You can make it bigger and smaller, whichever way. So that's basically how it's done. And you could go in and the thing I love about mental canvas is that it's literally infinite. You could just keep adding stuff. And one of my very favorite parts, let's put it in that mode so we could navigate and walk around. One of my favorite parts that I left until the very end after when I had, when the project was like almost finished is I left the Escher gallery undone so that I could really have fun with it. And I went a little crazy in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just telling my colleagues earlier before the webinar that I thought about doing each and every step. As you can see, the steps are flat. You can do individual steps, but um, because of time, I, I couldn't do that. Yeah. And it's probably more Escher-esque this way, I think. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And there's a, well, there's Waldo. So <laughs> what's he doing there? Yeah. Um, and of course, we have the bookmarks. You could go easily to different spots. Uh, the bookmarks you create your own bookmarks. They're kind of like key points um, where you want to emphasize something in when, when the video plays back. Um, you could even do animation. There's a sequence here with the little girl and the painting that is watching her with the, uh, the creepy eyes, I call it. Well, I can't find it. But you saw it in the um, in the video playback that we just did. Uh, okay, 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Rena, maybe that's a good point to uh, move over to Sam, and we can we'll come back to you, mm -hmm. Rena, in a moment. But um, sure. One of the things that I love about Rena's use of mental canvas is she's really um, creates kind of uh, very deep scenes, scenes within scenes. Like so, she's it's one comic with many comics or jokes inside. Um, so now I want to shift over to Sam, um, who's used the system a lot to do uh, concept art. Um, his scenes are very different uh, in stylist stylistically and also compositionally. So um, I'll let Sam maybe show a couple or one or more scenes and kind of tell us a little bit about his experience and then we'll come back to Rena in a few minutes. Hi everybody. Do you, uh... Yeah, we clear? can see you. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. So, yeah, uh, thanks uh, for joining in. And uh, yeah, it was really inspiring seeing Rina's uh, very uh, kind of deep scenes. I, I don't have like this kind of like infinite uh, scene here to show you, but um, a mental canvas for me, when, when I tried it for the first time, it was such a kind of a, a shift in the way that I draw. Yeah. So, uh, for example, this scene here. Um, I was working on some uh, ideas for like uh, set designs, and this is something we do in animation. Like you want to design a set, uh, a specific location for the characters to or, and the action to take place. And usually, you you want to build like a, a few different um, angles. But the cool thing about this system is that you, what you see here is not like a, a static drawing. It's basically uh, something that you can move around, which is the true magic for me here. So. Um, uh, this is completely changing the way that I'm thinking about set designs in the future. So, for example, like I thought, what would be like a cool scene to to do um, uh, concepts and uh, a treasure lot. treasure island was a, a cool idea that I thought I could uh, you know uh, experiment with the mental canvas features. So um, let's see here. Like, uh, let me show you how I started with this. So. Um, you can actually rotate the camera all the way up. And I started with a, just the beach line like this. And uh, I started sketching the beach line. That's, that's the only thing that I uh, did. And then when you rotate the camera, you already see the perspective happening here. And I started like adding elements as you um, zoom in. And uh, like Rina showed, like uh, the perspective is basically infinite. Like you can keep zooming in. And I'll show you some like small things here and there. Which is the fun part, actually. Like you, you can even add tiny elements that you don't even see when you when you're like at this zoomed level. So basically, you can build like a whole world and uh, you know decide maybe the scene here where I you know maybe this shot I can save it. I can bookmark it here. There are a bunch of uh, features here to add you know specific cameras. So if you like a certain shot, you can bookmark it and. You can uh, use it later for, for deciding maybe the, the action, the frame in this TV show or a movie will happen in this uh, direction. So this is exactly what the camera will see. And um, yeah, you can keep moving around. All of these elements I added like as, as I went along. It's uh, very fun to play around and uh, dive deep into, into this 3D space. And uh, the cool thing is that you're still you know, like using the, the, the same drawing tools that you're used to in 2D programs. So it's not like uh, modeling anything in 3D or doing anything uh, very technical. It's very natural to draw all of the sketchy lines, but it, with all the depth that this um, app um, gives you. So you can go crazy. All, all of those birds are on different canvases. And uh, that's how you can get this parallax effect. And I'll show you some canvases in a bit. I think some dangerous mermaids. Don't get close. So it's really fun. Um, so this is how it goes. Uh, you got you have the canvases here on the side. I hope my hand is not covering everything here. Um, so every element basically has its own canvas. Everything that is a flat element, like this crab, for example, I can uh, go ahead and select it. And uh, there's a nice feature here with this um, canvas selection, which can target different canvases. So I can click on this crab and it will show it here in the list. You can even rename it. 
So, uh, and every canvas of these can of these uh, canvases here have has its own uh, layer system. So it's like basically like a separate files, if you will. Like every every canvas is, a, is a, like an own its own PSD file. If you if you want to think about it this way, so this has its own um, layers. So we can hide it. I'm hiding now the crab uh, layers. So now there's no more crab. And as you can see, I, I have a sketch that was a bit rough. Um, and then I started like polishing it up and having having the, this is how it started actually. So um, I'm not sure anymore how it started, but um, at least like you can, you can place some things in 3D, like you can scribble, do something really quick, but then you have the layer system to allow you to kind of, um, polish it up and have like a final version somewhere. And uh, you can turn off layers. And then you can also like control the opacity of uh, separate layers. So I can um, yeah. So I can, uh, if this is like not a, not a good enough uh, sketch, I can lower the opacity and then add another one on top. And then I can use that to draw a better version of this crab. So I like the pencil tools. They're very responsive and can use that maybe. Let me pretend that this is a, a better version of it. And you can go back to the camera view and here we go. We have another crab and then you can turn off the previous one. So this is the same way that I used to work in uh, traditional 2D programs, but the Addition, the, the addition of camera tools and uh, different canvases makes it so much more uh, immersive. And these huts, of course, uh, like they, you have like two different sides and each of them have its own canvas. It might look a bit too flat from this view, but all you need is like basically this corner to, to give you the impression that you have a complete 3D object there. So yeah, I, feel, I mean, what do you think, Julie? If there are any questions, I can maybe. Um... Yeah, if um, folks have questions, we could um, take some now, or um, if not, uh, keep going. I want to let Ike make a comment here uh, about some of the things that um, Rena and Sam have showed so far. Um, one of the things that's uh, different about Mental Canvas is that uh, we're really not going for 3D metric correctness like you would with a CAD system. Um, as Sam just showed uh, very nicely, it's really about creating drawings and views. So you can kind of give this impression of um, a really complicated virtual world, but in fact, it's really just a set of drawings in space. And maybe actually, Sam, it might be instructive if you um, I don't know if showed a view from above or your or the carousel view in the um, different view modes just to sort of show the um, attendees what that scene actually looks like under the hood. Uh, sorry, but you mean like a top view? Yeah. Top view of yeah. the scene? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So this is uh, like this is the actual uh, top view that. Uh, so. It's quite simple. Everything looks like a paper. I mean, if, even um, the mountains in the background, uh, where where are the mountains? So this line here is like sitting on its own like 2D flat surface in the background as a line. I don't know if, I think it's clear from this. Yeah, it's actually very clear. Yeah. And um, yeah, so yeah. the idea is that uh, to the extent that you see 3D, it's really due to the juxtaposition of a set of drawings in space. That's right, yeah. And it's like stacking papers on a table, uh, like if you want to think about it. I think about it this way, like you have a, like a vertical papers, uh, transparent papers, and you have elements on them, which you can move around. But uh, yeah, you have a infinite space here, basically. Uh, I think I, I, at some point, added some Easter eggs, and I don't see them anymore, like some, some kind of a, <laughs> like ab aboriginals waving at you or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is really fun because you can go in literally any corner and, add, and keep adding stuff. The, the moment you have something basic, uh, it just like it's really easy to keep uh, growing that uh, perspective. And yeah, like Julie mentioned, this the idea of um, storing different um, panels, different um, 
uh, timeline timeline screenshots so it makes it easier to find elements that otherwise would probably be like hidden somewhere and you don't see them anymore so um, i have this can even record and export a movie uh, and maybe create like a world uh, kind of for the camera panning around and showing you um exactly how you want to how, how you want the viewer to explore this uh, location so maybe you have a a specific idea of how you want to uh, guide the, the viewer into the world here and you can do that by kind of sequentially uh, stack those uh, screenshots or timeline uh, views yeah so for creating um, concept art or comics another thing you could think about doing is you know if you have a background that you're using and you want you're you're making a multi-panel comic let's say or storyboard you might think about um, you could change the view slightly using the same background and then go in and draw for the next panel and you could even have panels that interconnect um, and so on so uh, there are a lot of kind of new possibilities and i think there's also a possibility to save work by being able to generate backgrounds very easily with new viewpoints um, so are there any questions at this point yeah, Julie, there's a few on the, um, this is Rod, there's a few, um, you know, on the Q&A. Uh, one of them right now, how many images from Photoshop can be imported into Mental Canvas? Uh, so it's basically unlimited. And you can also um, load not just an image, but also um, a layer, a Photoshop layer stack. So if you have, you know, character and several different layers, you could sort of separate them in Photoshop where you could do it in mental canvas, but, you know, read in that layer stack and then do some of the projection of their operations that you've seen. Um, the other thing you could do is uh, bring in an image and use it as a starting point, um, not directly, but something that you would draw over and maybe pull out some features and then maybe throw the drawing the original image away. Um, so there are lots of ways that you can work with images. And then I think the the other question was around how um, you know how how can this be published to the website like we saw with right. Rena's uh, gallery. Okay, so we have uh, and Sam just showed how you could save a video, or he mentioned you could save a video. You can also uh, save a scene in um, a web format, web jail format, and we have a separate program which is a web player which can be um, either standalone on a web page or be embedded in, a, in an article or a page of comics or whatever the format might be. Um, as, and so that the viewer could then experience the scene interactively without the, the authoring capabilities. And um, we'll point you at the end or email you if you haven't already seen it, um, the gallery comics so you could play around with that. That's an example of something that was published with the web player. Okay, and um, let's see, Mary has a question. I'm gonna uh, open up your mic, Mary. And then you just need to unmute, there we go. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I just wondered how long it would take to sort of master, not master it, but you know, get a handle on the software. Does it take weeks and weeks and weeks or does it take hours and hours and hours? Uh, Cause I'm not that, you know, computer savvy, but this is so interesting and fun looking. Uh, so how long does it take before you have something that sort of works, you know, to make a little scene that you're happy with, with a few elements in it? Um, Sam and Rena, do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, I was surprised that by how easy mental canvas is. The first time I, when it was introduced to me as just, you know, something on a website to look at, I was like, wow, I don't care how hard or easy it is to do that. I want to learn. And I, I, I was surprised at how simple it was. Uh, and it, I mean, everyone, everyone is different. I'm not a very computer savvy person either. Um, but I have worked with other apps and software like Photoshop and Procreate and some animation apps. So I had a little bit of knowledge of like how things uh, tend to work, but it was incredibly easy to get the hang of it. And like everything, you know, it was just a matter of time 
maybe a couple of days. Well, okay, maybe like a, a week or so before I knew, okay, I know the basics and I could just keep practicing and get better at it. Um, so you'd be surprised that, I mean, it looks comp when I show people, they're like, oh, that must be so complicated. It must be really hard. It's just as simple or as hard as you want to uh, make the, the project, like what the drawing is. It's, if, if you draw on a regular basis, you should have no problem drawing in, in mental canvas. Yeah, and I actually asked Rena a while back um, if she thought she could do a daily in mental canvas and she said, absolutely. Um, so that also speaks to like, once you're kind of up and running with the software that you could, you can generate content, I think fairly quickly. Um, and then Sam, I'd love to hear your take on uh, getting into the software, particularly from the perspective of an artist. Yeah, I think uh, similarly for me too, um, it was really easy. Uh, I used Photoshop for a long time and uh, the idea of layers and, uh, you know, stacking things on top of each other and things like that, it's uh, very familiar to, uh, you know, anybody who used uh, uh, any traditional 2D uh, apps like Procreate or Photoshop. And um, Mental Canvas adds just the ability to add uh, like dimensional scenes and it's really easy to learn. It's, uh, it's like basically just like six icons on, on top that you need to le learn about how to add um, and ba basically adding like a paper to the to the 3D scene that you're drawing. So it's really just about learning how to position that uh, canvas in space. And just then it becomes a matter of like uh, drawing it, drawing on it the, the same way you, you're used to basically. So, um, and it's easy to rotate in space around and move things or move things around. And uh, for me, it didn't take more than, I don't know, I, I, could, I could say like a few days, like uh, just to get more comfortable with it. But the first time, from the first like few minutes when you start drawing, it feels natural. You, you don't feel like it's a, it's like alien to you at all. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just jump in with once one quick to what of course. You, to what he just said? It's it's not technical at all, and because I don't like technical things, and I would never. I think I would never have fun with a program like CAD or any other, you know, you're not people. alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more of, you know, I just want to draw. I just want to sketch and, and draw and ink things and color things. So it's, it's very low tech in, in that regard. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions at this point? While we're waiting for that, there were a few other questions around, you know, the, the platform, you know, it is uh, available on um, iPads. Uh, we recommend iPad Pros, but pretty much any iPad um, with a pencil uh, will run the software. And then it's also available on Windows devices with touchscreen and pen. Okay, um, why don't we go back to you, Rina. Um, Rina's now going to uh, draw something uh, from scratch, uh, just to kind of give you a feel for a little bit more of a feel for the authoring capabilities. I may not talk all the way through it only because um, it's hard to talk and draw. It's the hard same to time. talk and yeah, I get really sloppy and I don't want to get sloppy. So, um, but just as I'm, I'm going to do a quick sketch. Um, and if anyone has any questions while I'm drawing, that would be great. So in case it's not clear, um, Rena started with a single canvas here and she's got, um, you can see um, she just uh, is now adding a second canvas. Um, that little window that comes up on the right while you're um, manipulating canvases is basically a bird's eye view. You can adjust 
the view in that window to look at your scene from any point of view you'd like um, for the purposes of adjusting the positions of, of new canvases and also um, projecting content onto new canvases. So she's just added the second canvas that's in front of the one with the green paint. I just um, made that disappear so that I could work better. While Rena's drawing, just uh, on the um, idea of uh, things appearing and disappearing, um, you can also do that over time. So um, Rena actually showed an example in the gallery with a character who moves from one place to the next, um, or appears in a new place and so on. So you can hide things, um, you know, um, at any given position, but you can also have them um, sort of show up and disappear in as you move through um, a series of views in the scene. And I'm going to do what Sam was just um, talking about a moment ago where you, you make um, a sketch, trans, uh, not transparent, you just reduce the opacity so of it. Translucent, then, yeah. Yeah, translucent. That's the word. See, I can't think and draw at the same time. <laughs> and then um, you go over, you could just go over the drawing, make a better sketch. Slightly better. <laughs> okay. I could get rid of that. You could trash um, layers very easily. And then I'm going to add, let's see. Another canvas, right about there, very close. Hmm. Don't worry, I promise not to draw any nudity. <laughs> oh, um, actually, there's a question I'll answer while Rena's drawing. Um, uh, someone asked about uh, whether we have a fill feature, and that's something that um, we're actually going to be introducing in another week or two. Um, so we've mainly focused in Mental Canvas on developing novel features that aren't available in other software packages with a kind of basic set of drawing tools. Uh, but fill is something that is very useful, particularly for comics. And so that'll be coming soon. There's another question about um, uh, mental canvas on an um, iOS or an iPad device. Um, so mental canvas definitely um, needs more graphics resources than a typical drawing application. So someone asked if it was worth upgrading to um, the latest iPad 
pro and I would say yes, um, not just for this, but for other things too, but the, certainly the performance will be better. Um, and then newer machines also have more memory, which is very helpful for uh, various types of graphics applications. Just because of time, I'm not gonna give uh, color. I'm just gonna do white so that it's um, not transparent we could get the full effect, but in the end, you could always add color. So, so far, I'm going to angle her a bit. Oops. Okay. I'm going to select her and I want to make her a little angled so she's like facing that way. Uh, just a bit. And then from there, we we'll go back here, make another canvas behind the green bushes. Not too far, right about there. Okay. So one of the things I want to point out while Rena's drawing is that um, in terms of ease of use, we have put a lot of effort into making this feel like a drawing system, not like a CAD system. Um, and actually, um, everything that Rena is showing us in this series of drawing is um, drawings is is really about starting with one drawing and then adding to it. Um, not necessarily with parallel canvases, but with canvases that are angled. And sometimes she's deciding after she's drawn something that, hey, I'd like that to be at a different angle. Um, and so all of that manipulation is actually being done from the point of view that she drew things originally. And she's got that kind of bird's eye window to assist in the process. But we've really tried to avoid uh, having um, the artist have to do a lot of 3D manipulation. So it's really emphasizes drawing and uh, repositioning of strokes rather than uh, kind of 3D modeling type uh, interactions. Uh, so uh, there was a question about um, drawing across multiple canvases. So um, yes, you basically when you draw in mental canvas, another um, feature is that you're drawing in kind of frontal planar mode. So at any given moment, you're on a single canvas. But you could also you could have um, a set of canvases kind of positioned relative to each other and kind of move from one to another and cross canvases that way. Um, you could also do something like um, make a single drawing. Let's say you have um, a, a house where you show, let's looking at the ang at a box house, looking where you're looking at one corner at an angle with a perspective and two sides. You could go in and uh, put a hinge in the middle of that and create basically two canvases. So you could sort of start drawing first and then introduce secondary canvases later. Again, the idea is to um, emphasize drawing rather than kind of where what the canvases will be in the end, because at the end of the day in this software, the canvases are really intended to hold strokes um, and make the creation of a spatial drawing possible. I promise you there will be a joke at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you may have even seen this. I'm just recreating here a Rhymes with Orange cartoon. Um, oh, I'm not even on the right layer. See, talking and drawing at the same time.
And when, when you have something on one of the canvases and you don't know which one it's on, I know it's on the tree canvas, you could always just use this tool and it tells you where it is so that you could get rid of it. So in this case, there. Oh, it's still there. Okay. I didn't erase it completely. That doesn't matter. It's just a sketch. Um, what were we going to do next? Uh, oh, yes. Some little... I don't know how, how I am on time. Am I good on time? So we might, um, since we're getting a little bit uh, close to the end, I want to give Sam a little time to draw. We could go to okay. Sam for a couple minutes and then come back. I'm going to add uh, the gag line. Yeah. Yeah, the gag. Um, and then um, end with some Q&A. So Sam, if you want to um, jump in here, that'd be great. Want to see the gag? Yeah, she's going to, we're going to have to wait. I'm, ri I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it in right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't know if you can if you remember uh, the, the previous version of the crab, now he's more friendly. Uh, <laughs> while Rina was drawing, I was like, let's see, this is how it was before when I started the scene. And then on the same canvas, it's still on the same piece of paper, let's say, uh, I just reduced the opacity of the previous one. And now we have a, a new sketch and he's, I think he's more, more friendly and better looking than the previous one. Uh, same thing, I think, uh, like Rina mentioned, like now he's uh, two, transparent. I mean, he is basically lines in space and you can see everything through him. So uh, this is what's nice about having layers is that you can have a, a layer on below it and below the line work and go to the any of these like fill tools. I can make the opacity here like 100% just to draw in completely opaque. I am just doing it roughly now, but uh, you get the idea. So now, uh, even here behind the claws, everything. Uh, when I go back to the camera now, he's uh, he has a solid background. So this is really cool. You can obviously like do more layers and uh, even shade, do, do different colors. But for now, I'm happy with this as a black and white kind of concept. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, what's really nice also, you have this tool here to kind of make everything more faded. So you focus on what you're doing without um, being so distracted. You can even uh, go the, all the way and um, hide everything else. So this is really cool. If you want to just focus on something, like let's say this is a more for complex design and it needs a lot of maybe details and focus without all of those other lines in the way. So this is pretty good, really nice feature. And yeah, you can turn this off and this is back to normal now. If you go like this, yeah. And uh, you can go back, for example, here to this top view. If I want to add like another star here next to the crab, I can do that. Go to the pencil. And I know that the crab is here, so I can draw maybe something in front if I want to. So now when you go back to the camera here, there are two modes, this brush tool. Um, I don't know if you can see it, the brush and the camera in the corner right here. So yeah, this is now obviously needs to be adjusted, but I can maybe get go to the crab and go to the selection modes and actually select the whole crab. And then there are move, uh, move, move tools and scale and things like that. So we can move things around and now he's more maybe yeah, more on the sand, as you can see. Cool. Uh, maybe I can switch to another scene as well. I can show you different things. I want to save it though. <laughs> I like this new version of the crab. I don't want to lose it, so save. Yeah, this is a much simpler one. But also you get the idea. I think uh, 
it's really easy to like place things around in perspective if you want to like add more things to this cave scene. So each of these elements like on its own separate canvas. And you can see like it's highlighting here in blue. So it shows you those papers. You see that this blue kind of rectangle here appearing around this object. So I can, if I want to go to the floor layer, I can do something like this and do any kind of like, maybe let's say ground detail, like grass or rocks or something. And then you can see it in perspective like this. And I added a few different uh, canvases here for the, for the bugs here. So just to have a more of this like 3D effect. So I think there are a couple of uh, canvases you see here on the side. Each of them have, like each three has their own canvas. Yeah, so I can add any, any of these like cave elements here around. If I wanna add something here in the foreground, let's say I choose like, maybe I wanna add something here in front so I position the camera somewhere where it's more like looking through to it, towards it. And I can do this uh, plus icon here to just add another canvas. And this view is good to show you where exactly the canvas is being placed, this like 3D view here. So as you can see, it's like telling us it's, the, it's putting the paper in this place in 3D. So when you confirm it with this button here, you or you are already drawing in a new canvas, say. And when you rotate the camera, you can see like this is exactly where we decided to have this element. And obviously now you can go to the layers system. And I would um, add a new layer and put it below it. And again, I would use like some filling tools just to just to have a, a bit more like a solid shape behind the sketch. Yeah, something like this. And again, you can, I just enjoy adding more refinement after the fact, after placing things in 3D. Obviously, you don't want to place things with, um, and work a lot on them and they're in the wrong place. I think it's better probably to just do some rough version first, uh, make sure that the 3D uh, kind of affects working where you want, uh, like the elements are placed where you want them to be. And after that, you can just add things and you know draw more details as you go. And yeah, <laughs> some us know, but obviously you have this control of layers. So it's really nice to, at any point you can reduce the opacity and then do a better version on top. And you can delete this one or hide it completely. Yeah. Okay, that's terrific, Sam. Um, why don't we go back to Rina and see uh, how we are with how we're doing with the gag? Okay. I, can't wait to see. I, I added some canvases. I added uh, some more greenery. <laughs> and um, so she says, "Don't tell me what to wear." He says, "Fine." I tell him, "Wear the Venus flytrap leaf." <laughs> um, I added uh, a foreground, and if you want to look at 
the entire thing. I added um, another canvas in front of the original bushes. And of course, I'll leave that to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, Great. that's, you would take this sketch and you would do a final from, from this sketch. Okay, um, and this is a question actually for one or both of you, if you wanted to, uh, you don't necessarily have to do it now, uh, but how you might animate a character um, in a scene like you did Reno with your, mm -hmm. um, with the little girl in your um, gallery scene. Sure, again, the, the bookmarks come into play where you could, animation has like key drawings and the key drawings are kind of like um the points where the character is, is making a gesture that's very definite and then in between you've got all these other um drawings that connect to the key points in mental canvas you don't have to do that you could just draw key points and then use your bookmarks to Take a, a like get the camera angle that you want and take a take a snapshot of it and then move on and do the next drawing the next key drawing and do the same thing again you would draw draw the, the sequence and uh sorry the second drawing in the sequence and then when you play and you make a bookmark out of that and then when you play it back it automatically just goes it flows very beautifully. You could hear, you've got, I don't know if you could see this, there's a timeline, there's visibilities, visibility, meaning visibility is basically you could make things uh, appear and disappear um, with that. So for all the items, like each, every object on, on in the drawing has its own canvas and you could make them, uh, when when the video plays and you saw it in the gallery scene you could make them appear when you want and you could also control the timeline so if you want to reveal something and you want it to be like a kind of like a fading in you could do that by having a very long fading in um so you could con control sequences that way um in in the gallery scene you saw it with the little girl uh where she's you know, she notices the painting looking at her and then she makes a sprint for her mother. And I used basically what I just explained, I used that to do it. So it's great for like, if you just wanna like make, make a video and have like a bunch of sequences of characters doing things and, you know, even like an educational video say, it's great for that. Like it's, it works so wonderfully when you wanna like move around and, and, and have different camera angles of things and then make things disappear and reappear. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. I mean, I could do it, but it would take a little bit. I don't think that, we have- That's great. I think that's, yeah. that's very helpful. I don't um, think we have the time to do it. Okay. But um, at this point, um, we'd be happy to answer more questions. I wanna ask um, Rita and Sam a couple questions. Um, I'm curious, uh, maybe a question for you, Rena, in particular, is um, how you think uh, this kind of drawing system might impact comics in the future? Well, I've been thinking about that for a long time, and I think it could have a very great impact on comics. I mean, you could see what it does. Hold on, let me just get rid of this on my screen. Uh, you could see what the software does. And it's the possibilities are you could do a comic. I, right now, I'm actually working um, with King Features on a comic strip. Uh, I, I can't really talk about it, but it's uh, a narrative sequence. So what you've seen today with Sam's art and, and my own is just basic one, one, uh, one environment, let's say. Whereas with, uh, with comics, you have you have actual narrative sequences and you have all these different devices that go into storytelling and, you know, things that happen before other events. So it, it's, 
I've had to really, um, it's been a challenging project because I've had to kind of come up with different devices that would allow the viewer or the reader to navigate a comic strip. And so that in itself, hugely challenging, but hugely enjoyable. I've never been so challenged and, and so immersed in a project probably in my entire career. I could safely say that. Um, but the result is that I've almost completed the project, the comic, and it works. Um, you can take an, a, a 3D environment and spatially map out a scene where you, can, you, you tell the reader where to go and how to read it. Much the same way, and I'm sure everybody knows about Scott McCloud's books on how to read comics. Much the same way as with a 2D, a flat comic on, on paper or on, or on a screen, people understand how to read a comic strip and where to go next. But with Mental Canvas, I've had to like devise new things for, to, in order to do that. And uh, one thing I can tell you is it's very exciting. It does work. Um, what else could I say? I can't even remember the original question. <laughs> I've been rambling. What was the original question? Oh yes, impact on comics, absolutely. Anything that takes a drawing and does wonderful things with it, it's, you know, this is a new playground for cartoonists and photographers, but for me, it's like, it, it's cartoons. So I hope that answers the question. Yes. The, yeah, I, but that's great. I could go on and on, but I don't want to ramble. Yeah, um, and Sam, I'm actually curious how you see this software playing a role in uh, concept art and um, in your process um, as an art director and concept artist. Um, I think similarly, uh, I mean, to speak about comics as well, uh, because it's also very enjoy enjoyable to me to do that. Uh, like Rina said, uh, creating like, I think it opens a door to um, expand the way we uh, like kind of read comics. And, uh, you know, by having, by having different scenes, different uh, kind of, like you, you kind of take the viewer through different locations. It's like a viewing like a different viewing experience. And the cool thing about this is that you can also, um, uh, like if you have like, if you wanna Im import images as well, you can do that, as, you know, like to, to just add anything you want in that space and like kind of guide the viewer uh, into that kind of new way of telling stories in, in like a 3D kind of a spatial uh, way. And uh, the other thing is that I think it's really, uh, it's really uh, valuable here with the system is the animation work when you want to design like a, like a set, a, lo a location for the, let's say uh, the story to take place. Uh, it's really, really v very valuable to be able to, to take the, the pen and just sketch in 3D space and decide where the camera will be and where the action will take place and, uh, you know, view it in different uh, directions like we saw in different uh, scenes from, from me and Rina. Um, that's so so valuable for this uh, kind of industry to, uh, you know, it allows you to sketch naturally as you would on a paper, but also you have this uh, uh, amazing way to like rotate in space and add things around. And it's like, it's, it's the same thing that you would do uh, with a 3D software, but without the, the technical things, you know, just, you're just using the same kind of line that you're used to basically. So. That's so, so freeing for people, for artists, for set, set designers, for comic artists uh, to be able to like think in three, three dimensions very easily and intuitively. Yeah, so, um, no, that's, no, that's, very, that's very helpful. Um, are there other questions from the audience for Rina and Sam? Yeah, we don't see any right now, really. Okay. Um, so just to maybe wind things down, um, I wanted to, um, Rebecca, if you have it handy, um, I wanted to show um, a video that 
was made by um, Carol Shung, an architect who uses mental canvas a lot, uh, both in her firm, but also um, for personal projects. And um, I think, Rebecca, you could turn on your audio for this. Um, this is um, an example, um, kind of like a, almost like a greeting card, a new form of greeting card. Um, here, Carol used mental canvas to um, tell the story of the house that she grew up in and what it meant to her. Um, so I thought we could play this and this may, um, some of you may have questions based on this as well. So. Yeah, so this is another example. Um, I like uh, the storytelling capabilities, obviously, but um, one of the things that's interesting about this is at different places in space along the way, different canvas sets come in and out. So you might be looking at the same position for a second or third time um, and new canvases are replacing the old ones. So um, it's kind of cleverly done, but again, um, there's really not very much, if any, 3D geometry here. It's all about drawings placed in space, their visibility or invisibility, and then camera views through those drawings. Um, so are there any other questions? Nope, none. none okay. Really. okay, great. Um, so I think that we're at a good ending point. Um, I'd like to thank Rena and Sam for sharing their uh, talents and experience with us today. And thank all of you for attending. Um, you're welcome to get in touch with us. If you'd like to know more, um, you could write to info at mentalcanvas.com. Um, thank you again for, for joining us. And um, we'll keep you on our email list and let you know the next time we uh, have a webinar. Okay, thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.